Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos and I'm joined by Steve Wendell from Hello Wallet and we're talking about employee inaction. Steve, talk a little bit about why employees don't tend to make the most out of their total rewards offerings. Sure. In short, it's because employees are human, just like the rest of us. Employees forget, employees procrastinate, they have limited willpower, they have limited attention, just like all of us. And that's really been the prime lesson of the behavioral sciences, where, where I come from, is that there are so many small things that can get in our way of what we actually want to do when we want to save, when we want to take uh, um, at the training courses offered by our company, when we want to uh, take the exercise program, whatever it might be. And yet, oh, we delay, we put it off, we do it later and later and later until it's no longer there. So the core lesson is that we all are stopped by small frictions in our daily lives. Those frictions may be anything from it wasn't urgent, didn't seem like it was something we had to do right now, um, uh, we just had many other things on our mind at the time, and so we forget, and then we don't come back to it later. So incentives are often used to boost participation in various programs. Right. Are they effective? Incentives can be very effective. We just have to be very careful about when we use them. So incentives are very powerful when we're looking for a one-time action. In other words, when we're looking for someone to sign up for a program, we're looking for them to attend a seminar, but we shouldn't assume that when someone has given an incentive to attend or do this one-time action, that they'll actually follow through. In fact, quite the reverse. We often find a, a backfiring that when someone is given an incentive to start a wellness program, to fill out their, um, uh, their health assessment on, uh, through the company, et cetera, we find them less likely to follow through on other actions if they're not incentivized. So while incentives can be effective, they're rarely cost effective for long-term behaviors. For things that, you know, if it's, if it's something that someone really wants to do, like exercising, like training, et cetera, um, we find it is much more powerful to appeal to the intrinsic motivations that someone has. In other words, the inward desire that someone has to follow through, rather than try and replace it with, an, with what we call an external or intrinsic motivation. Because that intrinsic motivation, once gone, they're no longer interested. So then what are some tips to try to overcome these challenges with employee sure. inaction? Sure. So, well, there, there are quite a number of things, thankfully, that, that we can do in the, in the total reward space to help employees follow through on their own desires. We think of them first as the basic frailties, the basic problems that we all have, and how do we make it easier to remember? How do we make it um, uh, more timely? How do we make it harder to procrastinate, et cetera? And those are things like, well, simply sending a reminder to people. It's not yelling, it's not annoying, just, hey, send another email saying, eh, you might have forgotten, here. Surprisingly powerful. Similarly, the small details of what we put in our communications about total rewards programs are tremendously important. So, does it come from someone that they know, or does it come from a stranger? Does it come at a time of day when they're actually checking their email? If it comes a few hours later, right, and, and, then, and when they get back to their email, they see they have 50 different things, and your email is just one of the 50, and they're just going to have to scan through it very quickly. You're making it harder for the person to follow through. In addition, we look at um, how do we structure the choices, what, what um, behavioral researchers call choice architecture. We say, are we overwhelming people with too many options? Not simplifying or making things stupid for people, but are we presenting them in a way that is simply overwhelming? And, and the prime example for this has always been retirement plans. That before we had auto-enrollment, and in some, in some companies we still have this, employers would offer 50 different options of where you could invest your money. I work in this field, and I have no idea how I would evaluate in a careful, thoughtful manner all 50 different options. And so what people do is they do one of two things. Either they just pull back and say, no, 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 I, okay, this is clearly an important thing. I need to wait. And then they wait and they wait and they wait and, and that fear stops them from taking action. Or they take a simple heuristic, a simple shortcut like, well, there's 50, I'll put 2% in everything. Or I'll just pick one that I know the name of. And it's tremendously dangerous for someone's long-term finances. So we look both at how do we smooth the path 
right? How do we remove frictions? How do we make things easier for folks? And also, how do we change our forms, our communications, in order to not overwhelm, in order to make it into di digestible, actionable format for, for employees? So are there any other learnings from behavioral science when it comes to emailing employees? That's obviously a, a primary point of communication. Email is often the single most cost-effective thing that we can do better for our employees. It starts from that first view. Who does it come from, as I mentioned before? Does it come from someone they know, does it not? What time of day does it come? Again, does it align with when they have attention? Um, what is the subject line? People will only uh, generally scan the first 30 characters of that email. And yet we often put um, important announcement, benefits, rewards, program, yada, yada, and like 100, word, 100 characters down the way, it actually says what the thing is about. They can't actually see that. And so they're scanning, and if they see again and again, go, important announcement, important announcement, important announcement, we're just going to start tuning that out. It's especially true when we look at mobile, where more than half of emails nowadays are read on mobile devices. You're truncated in what a person can actually see. And then when we look, when we look inside the body of the message, there's one perhaps disheartening lesson that comes through all, comes through overall. Most people just don't read the body of the message. There will always be a vocal minority that does, but instead we scan very quickly because, well, we have 50 other emails. We have lots of other things we need to do. And so the header is very important. A quick summary that a person looks to says, okay, what is this about? And the call to action. What are they being asked to do next? And so we focus our attention on those two things. How do we make a call to action that describes the benefits to the individual? Why would they do this? Not the benefits to the employer, which is so often what we say. We often will, will, will send an email out that says, fill out your health assessment. That's just annoying. Instead, we should say, get $1,000 off, right? Or, or get $1,000 on your, on your, uh, in your HSA. That's a whole lot more motivating. That's about the individual rather than about the employer. So we look for a short, descriptive um, call to action. We look for a header that is clear. And if whenever the program is free, we have to say it. I know, I know, again and again, total rewards programs are generally free to the individual. Say it anyway. Say it anyway. We see in test after test, in experimental trial after experimental trial, the power of the word free. And then we look at things. So th those are the major ones. After that, we look at things like the, the overall design and the layout. Um, if there is more detailed information, how do we draw it out with subheaders? How do we draw it out with bullets? And just don't expect people to, most people to read through the body of the message. That makes great sense. Thanks, sure. Steve. For World at Work TV, I'm Allison Avalos.